So, we will look at the term 1, the first term we will look at it and the first term is can be expressed as C m t 1. These two terms um, we will see that uh, these two terms cannot be satisfied simultaneously. One of the terms will be satisfied at a time. So, that is why we are looking at um, the, the uh, yeah, each term separately. So, I have this C 1 um, m uh, uh, this uh, this coefficient term. So, I started with n state and I am my final state is m state, but I really do not know yet whether the final state will be has to be higher in energy or lower in energy that we do not know yet we will just prove it right now what is going to happen both transition are possible and each term is co corresponding to one type of transition. So, first this term we will look at it and we if, if, we, if we write it down then it is going to be minus E by m A naught by 2 then spatial integration e to the power minus i k naught dot r k naught dot r uh, then epsilon unit vector then this um, derivative operator and then this is the spatial integration I have then I have this T 1 term and e to the power i omega m n plus omega naught T 1 by 2 term and then cardinal sine function term which is omega m n plus omega naught then T 1 by 2 this term I have. And the probability of transition is probability of transition from n state to final m state uh, is the, um, at time t1, this at time t1. So, once I have turned off the, uh, the interaction process, I am just trying to find out immediately after the um, interaction process has been turned off, what is the final population? and the population in the final state is corresponding to the probability of transition. So, that population I will call it uh, let us say that population will be given by square uh, absolute square of absolute value of this, this, this term. And if we take the square of absolute value of this term what we get immediately I get E square m square a naught square divided by 4. On the other hand this one is going to be now um, um, is going to be now absolute square of this term, then T 1 square, then this part will be gone because it will be multiplied by its complex conjugate. So, any complex co quantity will be gone and then this is going to be square of this cardinal sign function and square of the cardinal sign functions is plotted here. So, previously I plotted the cardinal sine function itself, it was like this oscillation, but because I am squaring it there will be no negative values. So, it is going to be all positive values and uh, we are getting it what we have shown here it is taking maximum value at the 0 uh, uh, variable equals 0. So, this, this is the variable right now and it takes the 0 value at when it is pi. So, uh, uh, what we see here is that this cardinal sine function this um, will be negligible it will make the population negligible unless we have W m n proportion uh, equivalent to minus omega naught. It has to be minus omega naught because the entire term has to be close to 0 and if the entire term has to be close to 0 then omega m n has to be minus of omega naught or in other words we know that omega m n what does it mean by omega m n? It is actually E m um, uh, omega m n has been defined as um, previously we have defined omega m n and that was um, 
E m uh, the difference between the energies the and that the, if we employ that then I can get this E m equals E n minus omega naught h cut because this omega m n um, is going to be uh, omega m n is E m minus E n divided by h cut. So, so this is going to be now uh, minus omega naught. So, I get the maximum population when this term becomes 0 because this has to be 0 and if I if I have this term to be 0 then omega m n has to be um, like this. So, E m has to be E n minus omega naught h cut. It shows that E m energy has to be less than E n. And um, the initial state of the atom, the initial state of the atom, this, this, this shows that the initial state, initial state. So, if it is deviating too much from 0, this, this entire term, then, then the cardinal sign function will become 0. It has to be very close to 0. This, this, this entire term. Then only I get the, the maximum population. So, which suggests that the initial state must be, must be greater, uh, greater uh, initial state energy must be greater than final state energy which means that one photon in this process. So, I have a situation where initial state energy is greater than final state energy and atom will be making this transition. If the atom is making this transition, then one photon has to be emitted that is omega naught h cut that one photon has to be emitted. One photon must be emitted. One photon must be emitted. This process is called stimulated emission. So, what is what we are seeing here the first term which we have got it is indicating a behavior of a stimulated emission and stimulated emission is possible only when the uh, this cardinal sign function this the, this entire term in within this cardinal sign function that term has to be uh, has to be very close to 0 and if we consider 0 it means that the one photon will be emitted. Let us look at the second term. The second term is going to be here and uh, we can again write down. So, we can directly write down C m T 1 population because square of absolute value of this C m um, this uh, coefficient is related to the population in the m h state after uh, the, um, the, the interaction has been turned off. So, that is going to be now E square by m square then a naught square by 4 then I have this absolute square of this um, this integration e to the power i k naught dot r epsilon dot this this integration then t 1 square then this part is actually complex part. So, when you take the absolute value square of absolute value uh, uh, we get we multiply by its complex conjugate. So, that part cancels out and so finally, I get cardinal sign function square of w uh, omega m n minus omega naught t 1 by 2 the square of this term. So, again the same argument is valid it this value has to be very close to 0 
if it is deviating little bit then the cardinal sign function is 0 and if it is 0 then population will be 0. So, there will not be no, no, no population in the final state. So, in order to have the population in the final state this is the initial state and in order to have a population in the final state this has to be 0 and if it is 0 or close to 0 then omega m n has to be close to omega naught and if it is so then I will be able to write down E m equals E n plus h cut omega naught. This shows that the fi uh, final state energy this is m state energy is higher than this. So, the final state energy final state energy is greater than the initial state energy. So, previously we have seen the initial state energy was greater than the final state energy. Now, this time we are seeing the final state energy is greater than the initial state energy and as a result one photon which is h cut omega naught is absorbed is absorbed from radiation. So, always in both scenarios previously also there is an interaction of light and atom due to the during this interaction due to that interaction there will be new photon which will be emitted that is why it is called stimulated emission. This stimulated emission is different from spontaneous emissions for spontaneous emission I do not need any interaction of light and atom even if you turn off the radiation the system which is electronically excited or vibrational they will spontaneously come back to the lower energy state that is called by by emitting photon that is called spontaneous emission. For stimulated emission I need interaction of the atom and light and due to this interaction another photon can be emitted that is called stimulated emission. Here due to the interaction because this entire term comes from the interaction term. So, interaction due to interaction of atom with light we have now a uh, photon absorbed uh, from the radiation and the photon amount is h cut omega naught that is why this is called the absorption process. It is clear from here uh, that there are only two terms I am getting from first order perturbation theory and that we have mentioned before. One of them is showing stimulated emission, another one is showing um, absorption process. But this treatment directly does not show the possibility of spontaneous emission and that we have already mentioned that uh, the semi-classical treatment does not include the spontaneous emission directly we have to uh, use statistical argument to get the spontaneous emission the, the picture of spontaneous emission from semi classical treatment. So, we have come to the end of this module we in this module we have discussed how an atom can interact with light with the help of uh, the first order time dependent perturbation theory and uh, we have made use of uh, this um, uh, vector potential which is created by the light when it is interacting with the atom. So, uh, light uh, sorry atom when it is interacting with light it is actually interacting with the vector potential of the light and uh, we have seen that semi classical treatment directly gives me two terms finally those two terms um, indicating that spontaneous emission is possible. Uh, uh, not spontaneous stimulated emission is possible and absorption is possible, but uh, it does not show any term directly uh, for the spontaneous emission. For the treatment of spontaneous emission we have to use statistical argument. So, we will stop here we will meet again for the next module.